Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. Salamat, pero sa totoo lang, hindi ako isang native speaker. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. If you start learning now, you'll be one of those few foreigners who can amaze Filipinos. Next one is energy drink. It means energy drinks. Okay, you could use it in this sentence. Like, um, mahilig si Tom uminom ng energy drink. Which means Tom loves drinking energy drinks. I'd like to replace Tom with ice. <laughs> ice likes to drink energy drinks. But Monster is my favorite one. <laughs> This is Filipino energy drink. It's called Cobra. And there's lots of flavors. <laughs> Nalulumbay. This means lonely. Actually, this is quite like an old word. Like, it's kind of poetic even to say Nalulumbay. It's just, it makes it look, it feels very dark. Dark. So, if you have a friend Carmen, who's lonely, then maybe you could use this sentence. Nalulumbay si Carmen ngayon, kaya pupuntahan ko siya. Nalulumbay si Carmen ngayon, kaya pupuntahan ko siya. Carmen is lonely now, so I will go to her. You're such a good friend. Carmen is very fortunate to have you. I feel like it's a very good thing to do for a friend who's lonely. Our next word is porcento. In English, percent. Ilang porsyento ang income tax sa Pilipinas? Ilang porsyento ang income tax sa Pilipinas? How much is the income tax percentage in the Philippines? Ah, uh, this is one of my favorite things in a restaurant. Too big. Because, you know, in Philippines it's hot and it's like you just... Like, after walking around all day or doing shopping or something, then you just want to sit down and, like, get that, like, very refreshing cold water. Yeah. But not only is it refreshing, it's also good for you. So, just like in this sentence, Magtubig lang tayo. Kasi libre na. Maganda pa para sa kalusugan. Magtubig lang tayo. Kasi libre na. Maganda pa. Para sa kalusugan. Let's just have water since it's free and it's good for the health. So, this is true. Water for life! Ang Davao ang isa sa pinakamatiwasay na lungsod sa Pilipinas. Ang Davao ang isa sa pinakamatiwasay na lungsod sa Pilipinas. Davao is one of the safest cities in the Philippines. So, I've been to Davao. I think twice. Really clean city. Really, and the thing that I enjoyed most in Davao is tuna. Davao is known for tuna and durian, right? Also. And tuna there, it's very affordable and very, very good and very, very fresh. I was there with some of my uh, Japanese colleagues and every day we're eating tuna. It's tuna, tuna, tuna. But we liked it. So we ordered like tuna belly, or tuna cheek, or tuna jaw, or tuna head. It's the same thing. Like the entire tuna, but chopped. So, if you want to eat really good tuna and durian, please come to Davao. Gumamit na mga produktong eco-friendly. Which means to use eco-friendly products. Ang pagdala ng tote bag sa pamimili sa grocery ay isang paraan ng paggamit ng produktong eco-friendly. Bringing a tote bag to the grocery store is a way of using eco-friendly products. Magsaya kasama ang mga kaibigan. In English, to have fun with friends. Mas mainam pang magsaya kasama ang mga kaibigan kaysa mag-party magdamag. It's better to have fun with friends than to party all night. So much not funnier. <laughs> but you can do anything that you want since it's summer. <laughs> no one will judge you, it's summer. Uh, this is very useful, actually, if you're very enthusiastic to see your friend that you haven't seen since summer vacation. Next gift idea is magarbong kainan or fancy restaurant. 
maraming magarbong kainan sa Manila. There are a lot of fancy restaurants in Manila. Online, you can buy vouchers, right, for uh, discounted tickets, uh, discounted prices for meals in uh, different fancy restaurants. So I remember my brother when he had his, uh, I don't know how old he is, but when he treated us for his birthday, he bought some vouchers online for this very fancy restaurant. So we went there and then it was his treat. And he saved a lot, a lot of money. And then we ate a lot, actually. So you can buy those things online. There are so many places online, Philippine websites, right? That they sell those uh, gift certificates and vouchers. Salamat or thank you. Can I borrow money? Guess not. I know this word is a favorite for a lot of people, but I think a lot of people also want to know what this sentence is in Filipino. Wala akong pera. Wala akong pera. Which means, I have no money. So I cannot treat you anything. But if we have love, that's enough, I think. <laughs> How do you express agreement in Filipino? You say, oh, oh which means, yes. Very simple. For example, there's an older person uh, talking to you and you want to say yes. Uh, you should be a bit more polite and say opo. So what if you want to say no? Then you use hindi. Or if you want to be polite, you say hindi po. So say you have a friend that, who asks you, do you want to drink with me all night, have party all night, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> and then you say, yeah, fine, okay. So in Filipino, you say sige, gamitin, to use. So for example, um, I don't know where you can use gami. Ah, no, actually you can use gamitin a lot. For example, let's use it in a proper sentence. <laughs> Hindi natin pwedeng gamitin ang may nakasulat na bawal gamitin. So, in English, we can say, we can't use the ones which are marked, don't use. I have a pretty straightforward, don't use it. If you did something really, really bad, then we use patawad. I'm sorry, lumabas, or to go out. So, you want to ask permission from your parents before you go out. How do we say it in Filipino? Magpaalam ka muna sa iyong mga magulang bago ka lumabas. Ask permission from your parents before you go out. Someday, kids, you will be parents too. Nasaan ang CR? Or, to be polite, because even at that time, you have to be polite, even if it's like really urgent. You have to be polite, you say, nasaan po ang CR? The next verb is magtrabaho or to work. So, for example, you want to say, as much as possible, I don't want to work overtime. In Filipino, you can tell your boss, ayaw kong magtrabaho ng overtime hanggat maari. Mag, it's um, the way you conjugate verbs, but it's in Filipino. And then trabaho comes from the Spanish word trabaho. So, if you say to your boss, because your boss is asking you, where is the report? You want to say, wait a moment. So you say, sandali lang po. So your friends came over to your house and you haven't taken a bath. You haven't fixed yourself. And then your friends just want to go out to have fun. But you want to say, wait a moment, wait a minute. Give me like an hour or something to at least get ready. So you would say, sandali lang. So next verb is maramdaman or to feel. For example, you really are irritated with this with a person and you don't want the person to feel that you're irritated with him or her. So if you want to say in English, I don't want her to feel that I'm frustrated, then you would say in Filipino, ayaw kong maramdaman niya ang inis ko sa kanya. But I think you have to um, approach her <laughs> and tell her that you are frustrated. <laughs> so go ahead and tell her. After dinner, you want to pay because it's your treat, because you forced your friends to eat adobo. So you would ask the waitress or the waiter for the check. So how do you say it in Filipino? Pwede bang makuha ang bill? Could I get the check, please? Or, if you cannot remember all these, just simply do this. Mag-iwan. It actually means to leave something. You want to say in Filipino, mag-iwan ka ng 500 pesos or ng limang daang piso para pambili ng pagkain. In English, please leave 500 pesos to buy food. It's the end of the day and you've had fun with your friends. So you tell your friends, oh, 
okay, bye, see you again soon. Which in Filipino is hanggang sa muli. But in regular conversations, you don't really say this. We tend to say, see you or sige. Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. Too big po. Water, please. Here's another travel phrase you should know. Too big po. Water, please. So here po is act doesn't actually mean please. It's just it's a very polite. It's a polite particle. You add it to the sentence to make it sound polite. Because you want to be polite when asking for water since it's like free. You need to be polite. Magkano ito? How much is this? Magkano ito? Magkano ito? This means, how much is this? So, yeah, definitely travel is also means you want to go shopping. So, you might want to remember this phrase. How much is this? Magkano ito? So, ito actually is like, is this. So, it has to be somewhere near you. Gusto ko ng sampu nito. I'd like 10 of these. Okay, so if you want not just one of something, you could try using this one. Gusto ko ng sampu nito. Gusto ko ng sampu nito. This means I'd like 10 of these. Sampu means 10. So if you replace sampu with another number, then you could make any sentence you want. For example, you want, I don't know, 50. 50 is... Limampu, so gusto ko ng limampu nito. Or if you just want three, you can say, gusto ko ng tatlo nito. I don't know what these are. But if it's ten, maybe it's like some kind of souvenir, you know. Pwede nyo ba akong bigyan ng discount? Could you give me a discount? Hey, another travel phrase you should know is, especially in the Philippines, and if you wanna have some bargain. Pwede nyo ba akong bigyan ng discount? Pwede nyo ba akong bigyan ng discount? Could you give me a discount? So, here's a tip when you're trying to bargain for something. You don't just ask this. You should have a price in mind that you would like to offer them back. So, it's more of like a negotiation, not like, Oh, can you give me a discount? They'll probably ask you, so how much would you like to buy it for? So you have to be prepared for that and not just ask, give me a discount. You can say, you have to name your price as well. Tumatanggap ba kayo ng credit card? Do you take credit card? Here's another phrase that you might want to know when traveling. Tumatanggap ba kayo ng credit card? Tumatanggap ba kayo ng credit card? Do you take credit card? So yeah, like, of course, you just have a limited cash that you exchange, I mean, your currency for the local currency. So you might want to just spend the cash in the places that don't accept credit card or else you might really need it somewhere that doesn't accept anything else but cash and you didn't have it. So yeah, <laughs> you might want to ask this question a lot. Odd. 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 The next word is odd. In English, odd. Kapag magbibigay ka raw ng pera sa kasal, dapat odd ang unang numero para hindi ito mahati. Kapag magbibigay ka raw ng pera sa kasal, dapat odd ang unang numero para hindi ito mahati. They say that if you were to give money at a wedding, it should be an odd number so that it can be divided. So it means that you should give odd numbered amount of money so that symbolically, right? So symbolically, it means that the couple won't be separated, right? Magkalkula. Magkalkula. To calculate. Magkalkula. In English, to calculate. Kaya mo bang magkalkula ng mabilis? Kaya mo bang magkalkula ng mabilis? Can you calculate quickly? Can you? No, she cannot. Sorry. 
dagdagan. Dagdagan. To add. Next word is dagdagan or to add. Pakidagdagan ng lima pang order ng kanin. Pakidagdagan ng lima pang order ng kanin. Please add five more orders of rice. Wow, rice is life. <laughs> okay, I don't judge this person. But still, like five orders of rice. Please eat whatever you want. Bawasan. Bawasan. To subtract. Bawasan. Or to subtract. Wag mong bawasan ng tax ang mga nagpa-part-time job lamang. Wag mong bawasan ng tax ang mga nagpa-part-time job lamang. Don't subtract the tax for those who are just working part-time. Hatiin. Hatiin. To divide. Hatiin. Or to divide. Hatiin natin ito sa walo. Hatiin natin ito sa walo. Let's divide this into eight. What else do you divide by eight? Just pizza. In cake. Or you probably get like eight piece, eight cups of rice. <laughs> divide this into two. Oo, tama ka. Yes, you're right. Oo, tama ka. Oo, tama ka. This means, yes, you're right. This one, it's actually kind of... Like, you're opening towards disagreement. You think that, like, this is, like, this is something you use to agree to someone. Well, it is if you don't include the word but. It's like, yes, you're right, but. <laughs> it usually goes like that, right? So, oh, oh, tama ka. Pero, mali ka. You're wrong. Mali ka. Mali ka. You're wrong. This expression, you don't really just use it on your own. Just say, Malika. Um, it sounds very, like, childish. You just say, like, you're wrong. So you have to, to follow it with why you think that person is wrong or else you act like someone, some kid with a tantrum or some very, very close-minded person. Sa tingin ko, hindi. I don't think so. Sa tingin ko, hindi. Sa tingin ko, Hindi. I don't think so. Yeah, this is a much, like, softer way to disagree. Sa tingin ko, hindi. It's like, it's not like a fact that you're wrong, but like, in my opinion, you are wrong. And reasoning, reasoning, reasoning. Don't forget to reason, or else you won't succeed in your disagreements. Siguro. Maybe. Filipinos actually like using this one. Siguro. Siguro. This means maybe. So, yeah. If you don't want to be like, I don't really agree with you, but I don't really want to disagree with you, you could just say, be in the middle and say, maybe. Siguro. Well, it's actually, you could also use this as, an, to open up another argument. Siguro. I'd like to do this one more than what you just said. Or, siguro, this is a better idea. <laughs> Maybe this is a better idea. Totoo yan. That's true. Here's another expression you could use to agree to someone. Which is, totoo yan. Totoo yan. It means, that's true. If it's true, then you agree that what they're saying is correct and you could say totoo yan asawa asawa wife or spouse asawa or wife or spouse ang aking asawa ay dating sumali sa miss universe ang aking asawa ay dating sumali sa miss universe my wife was in the miss universe pageant Wow, lucky you. And this is again what we were discussing earlier about the word asawa, which literally means spouse. So if you want to put a gender on asawa, you would say asawang babae for wife or asawang lalaki for husband. So because of the context, then you can tell that 
the speaker is referring to a female spouse, right? Bien ang babae. Bien ang babae. Mother-in-law. Bien ang babae. Or, mother-in-law. Ang aking bien ang babae ay napakabait. Ang aking bien ang babae ay napakabait. My mother-in-law is very kind. Oh, very lucky. You have a very, like, um, scary father-in-law and a very kind mother-in-law. And we forgot to say something about bienan because bienan, again, is a gender-neutral word. So, bienan just means uh, in-laws, right? When you want to emphasize that you're referring to the mother-in-law, then you would add, again, the word for female, which is babae. So, you would say bienang babae. And then for males, we'd say bienang lalaki. Lola. Lola. Grandmother. Lola. Or grandmother. Hindi na ako namumukhaan ng aking lola. Hindi na ako namumukhaan ng aking lola. My grandmother can no longer recognize me. Oh, this is pretty sad. Katuwang. Katuwang. Partner. Katuwang. Or partner. Ang katuwang sa buhay ang iyong kasama sa hirap at ginhawa. Ang katuwang sa buhay ang iyong kasama sa hirap at ginhawa. Your partner in life is your companion through thick and thin. When you're thin and then when you become thick, <laughs> that was, that's what it means. <laughs> tia, tia, aunt. Tia or aunt. Mapagbigay ang aking tia. Mapagbigay ang aking tia. My aunt is generous or tita, right? Now, being a tita is kind of like a, like a frame of mind, right? You're lazy. You just want, like, nice things. You just, like, want to drink tea. <laughs> you just want to relax. Be, like, uh, experience the, like, not be, what's this? Like, not be sweaty. <laughs> if you're a tita, you're in everyone's business. Aside from all those things that I said. So, imagine, you always would have titas that ask you, why aren't you still married, right? There are always those titas. They just have so much time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Inaantok ako. Inaantok ako. I'm sleepy. If you're feeling sleepy, you can say, Inaantok ako. Or, I'm sleepy. After lunch, usually, that's the time when you feel this, like, you're really, like, sleepy. Even though you have lots of work, you're feeling sleepy. Or sometimes you don't have lots of work, you're feeling sleepy. So... You can say it. It's valid. It's okay. Just don't say it to your boss. I don't think if your boss asks you, how, how are you? I'm sleepy. Oh, that's not really good. Well, probably should go home, not come back anymore. Goodbye. Thank you for your service. I mean, that's how it will go, right? <laughs> Masama ang pakiramdam ko. Masama ang pakiramdam ko. I'm feeling bad. Or if you are not feeling so well, you can say, Masama ang pakiramdam ko. Or, I'm feeling bad. So, you can say this if you have a bit of cold, for instance, or your stomach is upset, or um, what else? Or you're, you have a broken heart, like those kinds of things. So, if you want to say that you're feeling bad, you say, Masama ang pakiramdam ko. Okay ako. Okay ako. I'm okay. But what if you're just fine? What if you're just okay, but you don't want to say, I'm fine? Or, mabuti naman ako, or ayos naman ako. You can also say, casually, okay ako. Which is very casual. <laughs> very simple, okay ako. Okay na okay ako. Okay na okay ako. I'm great. If you want to say that you are really doing great, then you can say, okay na okay ako. You would have to note that in Filipino, when you repeat words, it, um, what, what's it called? It's like, it's a superlative um, version of the adjective, kind of. But it's not. It's kind of like amps up the, the impact of the, of the adjective. So it's equivalent to very. So you would say, okay na okay ako, meaning I'm super duper okay, right? Or if you're really, uh, for instance, sleepy, you would say, Antok na antok ako. Instead of just saying, antok ako. 
right? Salamat sa pagtatanong. Salamat sa pagtatanong. Thank you for asking. And for instance, um, you were feeling bad and then this person that asked you, how are you, made you feel happy, then you can say, thank you for asking or salamat sa pagtatanong. Because of course, you felt happy that someone asked you, especially if you're feeling bad. Pag-iyak. Pag-iyak. To cry. Our next word is iyak or pag-iyak, meaning to cry. Ang pag-iyak ay mahalaga pa minsan-minsan para may labas ang sama ng loob. Ang pag-iyak ay mahalaga pa minsan-minsan para may labas ang sama ng loob. Crying is sometimes necessary in order to release our feelings. I agree with this. Yeah, don't bottle it up inside. Well, actually, yeah, because it might come out as something worse. So, let it out as tears. Pinanghinaan ng loob. Pinanghinaan ng loob. Discouraged. Pinanghinaan ng loob. Discouraged. Pinanghinaan ako ng loob nang mabalitaan ko ang nangyari sa guru natin. Pinanghinaan ako ng loob nang mabalitaan ko ang nangyari sa guru natin. I was discouraged upon hearing what happened to our teacher. I guess something bad happened to him or her. So, that sucks. Sorry. Sorry, teacher. Nabigo. Nabigo. Disappointed. Our next word is nabigo. Meaning disappointed. Okay, so for example, you watched Beauty and the Beast and this wasn't really what you expected. So you might use this sentence. Nabigo ako sa palabas na Beauty and the Beast. Nabigo ako sa palabas na Beauty and the Beast. I was disappointed by the movie Beauty and the Beast. I wouldn't disagree to be honest. Hindi masaya. Hindi masaya. Unhappy. Next sad word is hindi masaya, meaning unhappy. It literally means unhappy, like not happy. For example, si Claire ay hindi masaya sa pagkatalo sa volleyball match. Si Claire ay hindi masaya sa pagkatalo sa volleyball match. Claire is unhappy about their loss at the volleyball match. I guess if you lose any kind of sports, you're not gonna be ha- you're not gonna be happy. Well, I th- although if you think that you have given it your all, then you'd still be like at least proud if you're not happy that you've done it or something. But there's always a next time. Just train harder, I guess, Claire. Tinanggihan. Tinanggihan. Rejected. Our next word is tinanggihan, meaning rejected. I guess, yeah, that's a very not, that's a very sad thing to be rejected. Like this example. Tinanggihan si Troy sa kanyang pag apply ng visa. Tinanggihan si Troy sa kanyang pag apply ng visa. Troy's application for a visa was rejected. This is definitely a sad time for Troy. Well, it's actually very sad if you if you get to this situation, because like visas have so many requirements, and like if you still didn't get it, it's just like oh my god, what was I supposed to do? Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FilipinoPod101.com. Nababalisa. Nababalisa. Upset. Our first word is nababalisa. This means upset. Jerry's upset. So, in Filipino, it will be nababalisa si Jerry. Nababalisa si Jerry. I guess because Tom is always after him. Saktan. 
saktan, to hurt. Our next word is saktan, meaning to hurt. I don't know who is Cory and who is Benny, but apparently, sinaktan ni Cory si Benny. Sinaktan ni Cory si Benny. Cory hurt Benny. Benny got hurt by Cory. I guess they're not in good relations right now. Kaibigan, meaning friend. Let me say something about this word, because like, you have to say it like this. Kaibigan. Kaibigan. Because kaibigan means friend. But when you twist it a bit uh, and say it like this, kaibigan. Kaibigan. That's kind of, it's not really a natural way of saying it, but it actually means lover. <laughs> so like when you tease your friends that like you think might be getting together, you say like, are you sure you're kaibigan or kaibigan? And, you know, there's a saying quality over quantity, so maybe for people who doesn't have much friends, you could use this sentence. Kakaunti lamang ang aking kaibigan. Kakaunti lamang ang aking kaibigan. This means I only have a few friends. So, yeah, it's not always about the quantity. Kumusta? How are you? Well, for Spanish people out there, you might recognize this a bit because it comes from the Spanish como estas. Because, you know, long time ago, 300 years were of Spanish colonizations will make your language have some Spanish things in them. Definitely remember this. And here's one point that you should know, but when Filipino people actually ask you, kumusta, it's not just how English-speaking people would say, how are you? And then it's just like a greeting. When Filipino actually ask kumusta, they really want to know how you are. So people really answer back how they are. Another favorite word chosen by fans is kape, coffee. And you know, if you want to order coffee, you want to know how to say it so that you can order it every day. Because <laughs> some people do not exist without coffee. Well, they are technically not yet alive without coffee in them, so remember this word, kape. For some people, this is not true. This is actually not true for me, but you could, if you, it is true, you could use this sentence. Hindi ako mahilig sa kape. Hindi ako mahilig sa kape. This means, I don't like coffee. Please forgive me. Uh, it's, just, it's just a sample sentence, like... I do, I do like coffee. Kinakailangan. Important. Next one is, kinakailangan. Meaning important. Kinakailangan laging maging tapat sa trabaho. We must always be honest at work. Kumukuti-kutitap. Twinkling. Next one is, kumukuti-kutitap. Meaning, twinkling. So I guess the hard part of this is like, the vowels, cause like, it's mostly u. But there's like, i and ah somewhere. Kumu kuti kuti tap. I guess the only way to pronounce this is to remember all the syllables. Kumu kuti kuti tap. Twinkling. Ang between ay kumu kuti kuti tap. The star is twinkling. How would you even sing like twinkle twinkle little star? Kumu kuti kuti tap. Kumu kuti kuti tap. Try that. Try to say it very fast. Like. <laughs> Jet ski. I'm not even saying the meaning for this one. Cause you know what it is. Mayayaman lang ang nakakabili ng sariling jet ski. Only those who are rich can buy their own jet ski. Yeah, cause it's expensive and you don't need it for daily life. Okay, next is beach chair. Meaning beach chair. For example, ayoko ng lumangoy kaya doon na lang ako sa may beach chair. I don't want to swim so I'll just stay by the beach chairs. Sand castle, which means sand castle. Hindi ko na enjoy ang paggawa ng sand castle nung ako ay bata pa dahil parati na lang itong inaalon ng tubig. I never enjoyed building sand castles when I was young since it kept being washed away. Like I never really built sand castles when I was young. 
it's more of like let's bury someone in the sand yeah <laughs> and make like mermaid figures of them yeah you get what i mean <laughs> okay the next one is palamigan meaning cooler this is kind of a straightforward lamig means cold or cool and like if you put the prefix pa and the suffix an it's gonna be like the place where so it's like the place where cold but actually yeah most people will just call it a coal man yeah it's one of those brand names that became common names for example siguraduhin yung dalhin ang palamigan sa beach para masarap ang inumin make sure to bring the cooler on the beach so that our drinks would be thirst quenching because like Everywhere it's hot, so we like our drinks cold. A cooler is a must-have. Bienang babae. Bienang babae. Mother-in-law. Bienang babae. Or, mother-in-law. Ang aking bienang babae ay napakabait. Ang aking bienang babae ay napakabait. My mother-in-law is very kind. Oh, very lucky. You have a very, like, um, scary father-in-law and a very kind mother-in-law. And we forgot to say something about Bienan. Because Bienan, again, is a gender-neutral word. So, Bienan just means uh, in-laws, right? When you want to emphasize that you're referring to the mother-in-law, then you would add, again, the word for female, which is babae. So, you would say Bienang babae. And then for males, you'd say Bienang lalaki. Lola. Lola, grandmother, Lola, or grandmother. Hindi na ako namumukhaan ng aking Lola. Hindi na ako namumukhaan ng aking Lola. My grandmother can no longer recognize me. Oh, this is pretty sad. Katuwang, katuwang, partner. Katuwang, or partner. Ang katuwang sa buhay ang iyong kasama sa hirap at ginhawa. Ang katuwang sa buhay ang iyong kasama sa hirap at ginhawa. Your partner in life is your companion through thick and thin. When you're thin and then when you become thick, <laughs> that was, that's what it means. <laughs> Naihilo, meaning dizzy. Wonder why people like this word, nahihilo. I mean, I myself do not like this word because I do not want to be dizzy. If someone invites you to go to the merry-go-round and you can't really hack it, you could say this sentence. Nahihilo ako sa merry-go-round. Nahihilo ako sa merry-go-round. This means I get dizzy riding the merry-go-round. If you're in the Philippines and you go to our favorite and only amusement park near Manila, you probably know what a flying fiesta is. And usually people are nahihilo in the flying fiesta. <laughs> sunblock or sunscreen. Kailangan maglagay ng sunblock dahil hindi maganda sa katawan ang matinding sikat ng araw. It's necessary to put on sunscreen because the strong UV rays is not good for your skin. Yeah, this is very important because like the sun could be very damaging to your skin. Bikini, meaning bikini. Bihira lang ang nakabikini sa beach sa Pilipinas. It's quite rare for people to wear bikinis in the beaches in the Philippines. I never really like tried to count who has bikinis and who has swimsuits and who has just t-shirts and shorts. Everyone is free. Lumabas, to go out. Lumabas, or to go out. So you want to ask permission from your parents before you go out. How to be said in Filipino? Magpaalam ka muna sa iyong mga magulang bago ka lumabas. Ask permission from your parents before you go out. Someday, kids, you will be parents too. Magtanong, to ask. Magtanong, to ask. So, for example, you have a new office mate and you want to tell your office mate, huwag kang mahiyang magtanong kapag hindi mo alam ang sagot. In English, what you just said means... Don't hesitate to ask if you don't know the answer. The next one is pamaypay, meaning fan. Gusto kong bumili ng pamaypay. I want to buy a fan. It's like, yeah, like if it's hot, you just need a fan. 
or a lot of fans. We also use fans for barbecuing, so it's very popular during the summer. Pumaso, to enter. Pumaso, to enter. For example, you went to a club, and you have a friend who looks 18. Actually, who looks younger than 18, like a high school student. So you can tell this friend, you are not allowed to enter the club if you're under 18 years old. Or in Filipino, bawal pumasok sa club ang mas bata sa labing walong taong gulang. Maramdaman, to feel. So next verb is maramdaman or to feel. For example, you really are irritated with this with a person and you don't want the person to feel that you're irritated with him or her. So if you want to say in English, I don't want her to feel that I'm frustrated, then you would say in Filipino, ayaw kong maramdaman niya ang inis ko sa kanya. But I think you have to um, approach her <laughs> and tell her that you are frustrated. <laughs> so go ahead and tell her. Maging, to become. Maging, to become. Maging can mean to be or to become. Mahirap maging hindi tapat sa sarili. It's hard not to be honest with yourself. Baba baba, going down. This first one is actually a sentence and it's just made of one syllable which is ba. So it goes baba baba, it means going down. Baba means down. And baba ba means going down. And the ba at the end is like our question marking particle. So ba 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 ba. If you are going down and someone asks this to you, then you just reply with o oh, o oh, meaning yes or or ba ba ba. So ba 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 ba. It's like the longest conversation in Filipino using one syllable. Sabihin to say. So our next verb is sabihin. In English, it can mean either to say or to tell. So for example, we want to say in English, don't tell our secret to anyone. In Filipino, you would say, huwag mong sabihin ang sikreto natin kahit kanino. Bulaklak, flower. Okay, next is bulaklak meaning flower. For example, mabango ang bulaklak. The flower smells good. Miserable. 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 Our next one is Miserable. Meaning, meaning miserable. So it's actually spelled the same way as miserable. But again, we say it as how it is spelled out. Miserable. So, for example, you had the report and then it didn't go well. So you might want to say this. Magulo ang report namin kanina, kaya miserable ang pakiramdam ko. Magulo ang report namin kanina, kaya miserable ang pakiramdam ko. Our report a while ago was messy. That's why I feel miserable right now. Guess you just have to let time heal you and move on. This is just a report. <laughs> Kamusta? Kamusta? How are you? So the first word is, how are you? In Filipino, kamusta? So this is very useful when you pass by someone, you want to know how they are, right? Or you just want to ask someone how they are. Porcento. Porcento. Percent. Our next word is, porcento. In English, percent. Ilang porsyento ang income tax sa Pilipinas? Ilang porsyento ang income tax sa Pilipinas? How much is the income tax percentage in the Philippines? Pag-iyak. Pag-iyak. To cry. Our next word is iyak or pag-iyak meaning to cry. Ang pag-iyak ay mahalaga pa minsan-minsan para may labas ang sama ng loob. Ang pag-iyak ay mahalaga pa minsan-minsan para may labas ang sama ng loob. Crying is sometimes necessary in order to release our feelings. I agree with this. 
Yeah, don't bottle it up inside. Well, actually, yeah, because it might come out as something worse. So let it out as tears. Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. The first tourist attraction is Hagdan Hagdang Palayan ng Banawe. Banawe Rice Terraces. Ang Hagdan Hagdang Palayan ng Banawe ay gawa ng mga taga-ifugao. Ang Hagdan Hagdang Palayan ng Banawe ay gawa ng mga taga Ifugao. The Banawe rice terraces were made by the Ifugaos. So Ifugao is part of the Cordillera Autonomous Region, <laughs> right? And in that area, actually, it's very mountainous. So it's very hard to plant anything. Not that it's really hard, but then the the topography of the place, it's not really easy to like do agriculture. So what many of the Ifugao people there did was to carve the side of the mountain into these sort of like rice, uh, to these sort of terraces. That now, that's why we call it Hagdan Hagdan, literally like stairs, because they look like stairs. And then on those flat areas, then now you can plant rice. But this is a very nice place. So if you want to experience nature, then please come to the rice terraces. The next tourist destination is Boracay. Boracay. Boracay ang isa sa pinakasikat na beach sa Pilipinas. Boracay ang isa sa pinakasikat na beach sa Pilipinas. Boracay is one of the most popular beaches in the Philippines. Can be a bit crowded but it still has one of the most beautiful fine sand beaches that I've seen, right? You can choose um, different places where you want to stay because there are so many, also so many tourists. And now, actually, because they wanted to clean up the beach, also clean up the, the water. So they are closing it for six months. And hopefully, like, it's going to be better because it's a very good place, very, very popular place. So the next top destination is Palawan. Palawan. Paborito kong isla ang Palawan dahil sa dami ng pwedeng mapuntahan na pang turista. Paborito kong isla ang Palawan dahil sa dami ng pwedeng mapuntahan na pang turista. Palawan is my favorite island because of its numerous tourist destinations. So we went to Palawan, I think, in 2015. So we went there in 2015 with some friends. It was very, actually very easy to do island hopping. Just this popular places to go in Palawan is El Nido. The underground river is a very uh, popular place to visit. Everything is protected in Palawan. It also boasts of lots of flora and fauna. And natural resources, Palawan is very, very rich. So the next place is Surigao del Norte. Surigao del Norte. Kung gusto mong mag-surfing, punta na sa Surigao del Norte. Kung gusto mong mag-surfing, punta na sa Surigao del Norte. If you want to go surfing, then go to Surigao del Norte. I actually haven't been to Surigao del Norte, but I've seen pictures and it's a really good place for surfing. But Surigao del Norte is a bit on the south, but on the side of the Pacific Ocean. So the waves there are much stronger. So it's very good for surfing if you're, if you're into such sports. I would want to go there one day. So the next place is Cebu. Cebu. Ang Cebu ay kombinasyon ng kasaysayan, mga isla, at lungsod. Ang Cebu ay kombinasyon ng mga isla at mga lungsod na may mahabang kasaysayan. Cebu is a combination of islands and cities with a rich history. If you still, if you want a calmer place but still want, say, the city, then you can go to Cebu. And just like take, a, a, say, five hour, three hour drive to somewhere, you will end up in a very nice beach. So for instance, when we were there, we went to Bantayan Island, and it's really like one of the most beautiful beaches that I've ever seen. Because it's really quiet, no one is there, just like long stretches of um, shoreline. 
the the water is very blue, very calm, very very nice. Candlelit dinner, candlelit dinner, candlelit dinner. So our first idea is candlelit dinner, <laughs> or in English, candlelit dinner. Uso pa ba ngayon ang date na candlelit dinner? Uso pa ba ngayon ang date na candlelit dinner? Is a candlelit dinner still a popular idea for a date? I don't know. Is it? I don't. I think so. I don't know. We haven't done candlelit dinner. I think personally for me, I don't like it when I eat in very like dimly lit. Really? I like eating like in dimly lit uh, restaurants, but not like super dark. Especially when it's just like a very small candle. It doesn't. No, because of my eyes, I think because uh, I I need I need more light. <laughs> but usually, candlelit dinner is not just candle. No, but there are some places like that, right? Like for instance, you eat out in like in open spaces, and then they have this because it's it's really even for even at home sometimes like Svetlin just wants to turn on like one of the the lamps in the living room, but then to me it's like I cannot see my food. I want to see my food, so I turn on everything. Like, Whoa. Parang barbecue camping, camping. Yeah, I, I don't want to be... I, I cannot see my food, so... I don't know. But to some people, of course, this is like very romantic. And I think it's a very romantic thing because you are prettier, more handsome in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the purpose of candlelit dinner, right? You have to agree with me. Yes. See? Maglakad ng malayo ng magkasama. Maglakad ng malayo nang magkasama to go for a long walk maglakad nang malayo nang magkasama to go for a long walk masayang maglakad nang malayo nang magkasama masayang maglakad nang malayo nang magkasama it's fun to go on a long walk together um i think this is true <laughs> because i remember when means but lena are still flirting with each other <laughs> We walked for three hours. <laughs> or I think just because he doesn't have money. <laughs> He's so poor. <laughs> Hi, person. So I think that, but actually this is very good because walking together makes you fit and then makes you more, what's this, like makes you talk more to each other, right? So then you can have like really good conversations while you're talking and then you see different things, you see different people. You You're just like very like very what's this like invigorated while you're walking but at the same time also because you don't have money i think <laughs> right yes uh, that means if your partner wants to walk so much that means it's a very practical partner right and also a very poor partner <laughs> poor but healthy poor and healthy yes yeah. so this person will live very long <laughs> prepare to walk for very long <laughs> mug bowling mug bowling to go bowling. Mag bowling or to go bowling. Imbitahin natin ang iba pang kaibigan para mag bowling. Imbitahin natin ang iba pang kaibigan para mag bowling. Let's invite some friends to go bowling. Bowling is actually much more fun if you go there with friends, right? Then because you feel like very competitive, you just want to beat your friends, beat them to the dust. Right. You could use your bowling ball for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm never good at bowling. Yeah. So it's still fun. Yeah, but it's really fun even if you don't you're not good at it. It's almost so expensive also, right? So it's a good idea for a date actually, because then you you both get fit, you see each other like having fun, and then it's not so expensive. Very good. Pumunta sa aquarium. Pumunta sa aquarium. To go to the aquarium. Pumunta sa aquarium. To go to the aquarium. Maraming taong pumupunta sa aquarium para mag-date. Maraming taong pumupunta sa aquarium para mag-date. There are a lot of people going on a date to the aquarium. Have you been for a date? Not really a date. I'm still a friend thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually, I don't, I, I mean, I like, fish. I, <laughs> I like seeing fish. I like eating fish, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not like the type of person to actively go to an aquarium for a date. I think maybe it's also like it's kind of dark and like the water is like. I am moving. It's very romantic, and then again in the dark, you are both like handsome, more handsome and prettier, right? And then, 
Yeah. Or at least you feel like you're prettier than the the than the, the, fish. the fish. Especially if it's a jellyfish. <laughs> or it's a blowfish. <laughs> Not I think for many people they I think especially if you watch Japanese dramas, right? There's always like some scene in the aquarium, right? So yeah, so probably I think it's a very, especially if it's a pretty aquarium, but if it's like a not, not so clean looking aquarium, probably not a good place to bring your date to. So choose your aquariums. Pumunta sa opera. Pumunta sa opera. To go to the opera. Pumunta sa opera. Or to go to the opera. Mahilig si Maria sa opera songs, kaya pumunta sila ni Ibarra sa opera. Mahilig. Si Maria sa opera songs, kaya pumunta sila ni Ibarra sa opera. Maria likes opera songs. That's why she and Ibarra went to the opera. But in the Philippines, we don't have so much... There are theaters, of course, right? We can go to the theater, um, watch a play, right? See, a, see musical. a Yeah, musical. But opera, we don't really have opera, but... Before, I think in the history, you had like Sarsuela, like really old types of opera, Sarsuela or Bodaville, right? Those kinds of older ones. But they're not really being done now, I think. So, yeah, so those old, like old songs. So that's why probably Maria likes opera songs because it reminds her of her. From, because Maria and Ibarra are, Maria Clara actually, uh. and Ibarra are characters from, uh, from a novel by our national hero, Jose Rizal. And, yeah, they like opera songs. Magboluntario to volunteer. Magboluntario to volunteer. Pagkatapos ng sakuna, maraming oportunidad para magboluntario. After a disaster, there are a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Protectahan to protect. Protectahan. Which means to protect. Kailangan nating Protectahan ang mga nanganganib na uri ng hayop. In English, we need to protect endangered species. Actually, in Filipino, we use lots of English words. So we can say, kailangan nating protectahan ang mga endangered species. Magreuse to reuse. Magreuse to reuse. Ang pagreuse ay isang paraan ng pagtitipid. In English, reusing is one way of saving. Pangalagaan to conserve. Pangalagaan, which means to conserve. In Filipino, pangalagaan natin ang mga likas na yaman. Let's conserve natural resources. Magbawas ng basura to reduce trash. Magbawas ng basura to reduce trash. Kailangan magbawas ng basura ang mga industriya. Industries need to reduce their wastes. Don't say it as mga. Say it as mga. First word is magbiyahe sa ibang bansa. To travel abroad. The first word is magbiyahe sa ibang bansa, which means to travel abroad. Magbabiyahe ako sa ibang bansa pag may nakita akong murang plane ticket. I'll travel abroad when I find a cheap plane ticket. So my favorite place actually is El Nido. It's really, what do you call it? It's, like, it's very calm. The water is not cold, it's not warm, it's just perfect. So you will enjoy it. So start booking now. Magrelax sa beach. To relax at the beach. Next we have magrelax sa beach, which means to relax at the beach. Abril ang buwan na pinakamainam na magrelax sa beach. April is the best month to relax on the beach. So, actually, for this month, it is now something like 30 to 40 degrees. And April and March are considered the hottest months in the country. Mag-aral ng Filipino gamit ang FilipinoPod101.com To learn Filipino with FilipinoPod101.com Mag-aral ng Filipino gamit ang FilipinoPod101.com Which means... To learn Filipino with FilipinoPod101.com. So, for example, if you really like are very eager to learn Filipino this summer, <laughs> you can say, Subukan mong mag-aral ng Filipino gamit ang FilipinoPod101.com at kasama ang mga kaibigan mong Pilipino.
Try learning Filipino using filipinopod101.com with your Filipino friends. Matutong magluto ng pagkain Pilipino. To learn to cook Filipino food. Matutong magluto ng pagkain Pilipino. To learn to cook Filipino food. So if you want to use it in a sentence, in Filipino, you can say, Kung gusto mong matutong magluto ng pagkain Pilipino, magsimula ka sa adobo. In English, you can say, If you want to learn to cook Filipino food, start with adobo. Because it's the easiest thing to cook. Mag-ihaw. To have a barbecue. Next word is mag-ihaw, which means to have a barbecue. Pinakamainam ang mag-ihaw ng manok sa beach. It is best to have a chicken barbecue on the beach. You can actually barbecue other stuff. Like from, from chicken, pork, to innards. We even have a coagulated blood. Sandcastle, which means sandcastle. Hindi ko na-enjoy ang paggawa ng sandcastle nung ako ay bata pa dahil parati na lang itong inaalon ng tubig. I never enjoyed building sandcastles when I was young since it kept being washed away. Like, I never really built sandcastles when I was young. It's more of like, let's bury someone in the sand. Yeah. <laughs> And make like mermaid figures of them. Yeah, you get what I mean. <laughs> okay, the next one is palamigan, meaning cooler. This is kind of a straightforward. Lamig means cold or cool. And like, if you put the prefix pa and the suffix an, it's gonna be like the place where. So it's like the place where cold. But actually, yeah, most people will just call it a coal man. Yeah, it's one of those brand names that became common names. For example, siguraduhin yung dalhin ang palamigan sa beach para masarap ang inumin. Make sure to bring the cooler on the beach so that our drinks would be thirst quenching. Cause like, everywhere it's hot, so we like our drinks cold. A cooler is a must-have. Okay, next is laki ng tubig or tide. Usually in the Philippines, we just call it either high tide or low tide. But anyway, you could use it in the sample sentence. Hindi ako marunong tumingin ng pagpalit ng laki ng tubig. I don't know how to observe the change of tides. Guess if it's like low, it's low tide. And if it's high, it's high tide. There's this expression. If you ask Filipinos like, how many islands are there in the Philippines? They would ask you back, in high tide or low tide? Kulay balat. Meaning tan. Bakit ang mga may kulay balat ay gusto magpaputi at ang mga maputi ay gusto magkakulay balat? Why is it that people with tan skin want to have pale skin and people with pale skin want to have tan skin? This is so true. Just be proud of your skin color. Next is snorkeling. Meaning snorkeling. May magandang snorkeling spot sa Coron Palawan. There is a nice snorkeling spot in Coron Palawan. If you want to go to a beach in the Philippines, please go to Palawan because it's very beautiful. Chinelas or flip-flop. Hindi na kailangan magdala ng sapatos pag pupunta sa beach. Chinelas na lang. There is no need to bring shoes when going to the beach. Just wear flip-flops. Chinelas is part of like Filipino culture. It's like the footwear you use at home. It's also the footwear that parents might use if you're being naughty. Backpack. In Filipino, you say backpack, right? So if you want to say backpack, you say backpack. <laughs> <laughs> it's a less e. Eh? It's not like a, a less a a because of the k. Actually, it kind of sounds a bit rolled, right? Mm-hmm. So backpack. So if you want to say backpack, you say backpack. So you want to ask your friend which is easier to carry, a backpack or a shoulder bag. Then, you say in Filipino, Ano ang mas madaling buhatin? Backpack o shoulder bag? So, the next word is kaklase or in English, classmate. So, for example, you have a very beautiful classmate in your school. So, in Filipino, you would say, Sikat ang maganda kong kaklase sa buong paaralan. My beautiful classmate is popular in the school. Of course, where would she be popular if she's your classmate, right? <laughs> If you say your my beautiful friend is popular in the school, okay, yeah, but my beautiful classmate is popular in the school. 
Kaklase is like a general. I guess it's just a term for a classmate, right? We don't use it for any other thing. Just classmate. Okay. So, the next word is takdang aralin or homework. In Filipino, you would say, nakikita ko ang halaga ng hindi pagkopya ng takdang aralin. I can see the value of not cheating on my homework. Good for you. <laughs> okay, next word is pagsusulit. This is very important, so remember this. It might come up in your exam. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because pagsusulit means exam. So, for example, you want to be really sarcastic to someone who got a high grade in their exam. So, you will tell them, Ang mataas na grado sa pagsusulit ay hindi nangangahulugan na matalino ka. Or in English, a high grade in the examination doesn't mean you are intelligent. Hello, Supe. <laughs> Just, I have a friend. We're really friends. But uh, in high school, he was the valedictorian. And I don't really study in high school. But he was the valedictorian. And then, now, we are always telling him, you only became valedictorian because you are good at memorization. And what's nice about him is that he admits it. <laughs> That's why we're still friends. The next word is summer vacation. In English, it is summer break. Actually, it's also in English, summer vacation. But when we say summer break in Filipino, we don't use the term summer break, but we use summer vacation more, right? In Filipino, you would say, Masaya ang summer vacation. Summer break is fun. <laughs> Actually, in the Philippines, all, all year round it's summer. But it's not all year round it's vacation, no. It's just summer. And usually we have summer vacation from end of March, beginning of April, for in time with the Holy Week, right? And that's actually the period when we have the hottest temperature. Sometimes around 40, right? 38, 40. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it can get really hot. But because we have lots of beaches, there's always some place where you can go. And it's pretty cheap everywhere you go. And so summer break is fun. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.